Hello everyone and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with computer music and this month we're delving back into the Zebra CM plugin to create a fantastic hollow bass sound. This was a sound that became inextricably linked with Garage back in the 90s but has subsequently gone on to be a very influential sound in other forms of music, everything from rap and R&B right the way through to pop. So let's dive straight in. We're working in Logic today and as you can see we've already got a copy of Logic open and we've got our Zebra CM plugin plugged in and ready to go. First thing we need to do is initialize our patch. So we do this by going to the display at the top of the plugin, clicking and dropping down to init which will initialize our patch. That'll give us a sound like this. The main crux of this sound is all about the square wave. So we're going to visit oscillator 1 first and foremost, go to the center of the wave display, click and drag our mouse upwards until we're reading a 2.00 on the upper display. You'll also see a visual which is giving us a square wave. We need to mirror this setting in oscillator 2. So moving over to the oscillator 2 section, do the same process again. Click and hold, drag the mouse up until it reads 2 in the upper display and you should see a square wave. To create this unique sound we need to use oscillator 2 as a form of sub oscillator. So we're going to go to the tuning pot that we have at the top of the oscillator section here. We're going to click and drag that down so that it reads minus 12. That relates to a number of semitones. As a consequence, there are 12 semitones to an octave and it should sound one octave lower. While we're in the vicinity of oscillator 2, we're going to make a subtle detune, which we do by visiting the detune pot, which is the top right hand side here. We're going to drag that down to a minus 6 setting. This detuning is very, very subtle, but it'll just have the effect of thickening the texture of our sound. At the moment, we can't actually hear oscillator 2, so the next thing we need to put right is visiting the volume, which is directly underneath the oscillator 2 legend, and we need to turn that up to a setting of around about 80. The reason we're setting it to 80, and not the 12 o'clock 100 position, as it is on oscillator 1, is because we don't want the lower octave to overpower our upper octave, which is going to provide the main fundamental for our sound. You should now hear a sound like this. It's time to visit the filter section and make some alterations there. So the first thing we do, moving over to the right hand side of the plugin window, is change the filter type. The wonderful thing about the Zebra CM plugin is there are plenty of filter types to choose from. We quite like the LP, low pass, old drive. One of the facets of this particular filter type is it offers an overdrive circuit which you can see on the top right here. We'll be coming back to that shortly. Because we're using a low pass filter at the moment, our sound is currently very, very bright. Far too bright for what we need. So we're going to change this by attending to the cutoff control. Change the cutoff control to a value of around about 56. You can see this clearly on the display at the top. There we go. And you can hear that's really dull by comparison. However, don't worry just yet. Next, we're going to visit the envelope 2 modulation side of the equation. And envelope 2 is currently routed toward the filter. You can see there's a pot here which is already pre-assigned. We're going to change the setting on this pot to around about 40. And once we've changed that, you will hear that the sound is a lot brighter. And you can hear that we're now getting some modulation from envelope 2, which is affecting the filter, and that's what's giving us the brightness at the front of the sound. As we mentioned earlier, there are lots of different filter types in the Zebra CM plugin, and this particular filter that we've opted for here has a drive control. So we're going to turn this up to something between 30 and 40. Notice that we've now got some slight coloration, particularly in the sort of the upper echelons of the frequency bands. And if we really take this up while we're playing, you'll hear it color it even more. So it's saturating those upper tones. You can actually place this drive control wherever you like, but we're going to place it back in the sort of around about the 30 to 40 ballpark. Our sound is very nearly ready to play, but we need to make some slight alterations to the envelope settings. Let's start with envelope two. Envelope 2 is clearly labelled toward the bottom of the plugin, and we're going to change two elements here. First of all, we're going to make the decay a little bit swifter, so we'll change the decay pot to a value of around about 35. Next, we want to lessen the sustain, so we're going to take the sustain pot and turn that down to around about 20. Envelope 1, you will find, is located above envelope 2, and this is the envelope that controls the volume of our sound. Because the sound is going to be relatively filtered, it's going to be a good idea to increase our sustain amount to a full 100, so make sure that's all the way up. We now have a sound like this. 
Now the last part of the equation is to do with how many notes the Zebra CM can play at one time. We have the ability to switch this from polyphonic mode, which is where it can play more than one note at a time, to a monophonic mode, which is where it will only play one note. We do this by going to the global setting, clicking on where it currently reads poly, and changing it to mono. The reason you might want to do this is because you can actually do certain types of effect in monophonic mode. For example, if you wanted to play what you might call a glissando, down all your keys, you get that kind of effect where only one note will trigger at one time. If you do that in polyphonic mode, as I will demonstrate here, you'll get a bit of a mush. So mono mode is much more suitable for playing bass lines. Having said that, if you intend to sequence your bass line within your door, you might not notice a huge difference. Now we have our completed bass sound, it's probably going to be a really good idea to apply some form of compression. And we want to give a little bit of a shout out to not only the clean compressors that you get in a lot of doors these days and you can buy as third party plugins, but also a unique type of compressor known as a FET compressor. We've got a couple of compressors plugged in in line here. We have the Fab Filter compressor, which is this one here which will keep things nicely under control and also at the same time be quite clean. However, if we look at the basic compressor that you have in Logic, we have the ability to switch this from the regular default, which is the Platinum Digital Compressor, to what's known as a Studio FET Compressor. Now, FET compressors are transistor-based and they have a fantastic feature where they often highlight the bottom end spectrum. And it will give you, with a little bit of overdrive, it will actually give you some nice beefy bass sounds. Our favourite of the FET compressor line, if you're lucky enough to own a Universal Audio interface, is the 1176 compressor that Universal Audio make, and this is probably the finest example that's available in this particular sort of cloning. And you can hear what we've got going on there is a degree of saturation. If we turn it off, it's nice and clean. We turn it on, we're really overdriving it. And you can hear that there's all sorts of overdrive and saturation occurring there, mainly because we've got it very, very heavily compressed and we've got a large signal going in and quite a large signal coming out again. So that's our hollow bass sound for this month. We'll see you next time.